What up y'all, Styles Major here. Today's video is just gonna be on a topic that, that, that's always crossed my mind ever since I was young. And that is, is God real? As well as, what are we doing here? I don't know about you guys, but do you guys ever like, you know, just maybe you'll be alone, you'll be in your house, and you just think like, man, this is so strange to be in the human condition, the human, ex human experience. We're rotating around the sun. Uh, we're, we're just this, you know, this, this planet in the galaxy and the cosmos. And then you think about the cosmos and just how like beautiful and spectacular and crazy that is. I, I'm not going to pretend like I'm the most scientific person. I don't know all the information and data about everything, but I'm just saying just this feeling you get. Um, and, and sometimes it's so easy in the day-to-day -day life to just get caught in the monotony of being a human and going to work and dealing with dramas of people or, you know, um, you know, dealing with traffic and dealing with paying bills and relationships and having to eat and having to shower. And we get so caught up in being a human sometimes, I feel like we, it kind of distracts us from this experience of, wow, what are we? what is this like sometimes I look at myself and I'm like well this is crazy like I'm this this spirit inside of this this suit this body and and controlled by my brain and then all that's controlled by my spirit and and um, you know you can really go down a rabbit hole when you go okay it's like uh, you know who created God if God created us who created God but in the Bible it says that God was eternal so he was he was he wasn't created um, is so to speak um, being respectful to everyone's religious beliefs this is not a religious video or anything of that nature um, I believe in God I believe in Jesus that's what I believe in other people believe in different things um, some people don't believe in anything uh, that doesn't that doesn't matter to me um, everyone's open to discuss what I'm talking about in this video um, but I'm gonna share a little bit about my testimony and how I've seen God work in my life and what was the turning point for me to truly believe in Jesus, in God, in angels, in heaven. And I'm going to get deep into that. Um, but it, it's something that has always just been on my mind. Uh, you know, I remember just being a kid, remembering my first memory of being conscious was was actually, I remember, it's, it's so weird because you're alive for three, four years. And I remember maybe being four years old. This is my first memory. And I didn't even know how I knew what to do, but I remember just like, um, a couple, two memories. The first and second memory, like the first memory I ever had was remembering waking up one day and I'm throwing my pants on and I'm going outside to play. And that's like the first memory. I, I think the first time I ever felt that I was conscious of what was going on. And so it was like, what was, before I was conscious, what was, what was running, what, what was controlling me? Like if I wasn't consciously doing what I was doing, how, that's how I felt. I remember just waking up one day and I'm just throwing my pants on. And I'm just this kid and I have this family and I feel very close to these brothers and sisters and people and I have this dad who's an alcoholic and he doesn't really talk to me and he's angry all the time and I have a mom that's overly stressed out and you know all these things and uh, the second memory I had as a kid was feeding horses and I remember just like looking at these horses and being like what's this like but feeling the love from those horses and feeling the connection I didn't know what divine energy and all that stuff was but those those were some of my first my first memories um and so i'm going to talk to you guys about like why i believe in god and kind of what changed you know so for years i grew up um i remember going to church as a kid my brother was uh very into christianity my grandmother would take me to church um and i would just go i i you know i was taken to um, Jehovah's Witness. I used to have like a sponsor or whatever in Jehovah's Witness. Like a this this rich kid and his family, they would like take me to these meetings and or these whatever you call them. And um, it was really cool, you know. They were nice and took care of us, but I had no idea what was going on. I, I just showed up and <laughs> wore my clothes, my suit that I got at the Goodwill, you know, and thought I was cool. And uh, you know, so religion really, I mean, religion really didn't have any effect on my life when I was younger. Um, but when I, um, when I got older, uh, probably about 14, 15, my mom, um, enrolled us into, uh, a Christian, um, 
you know, summer camp. And around that time, those years before that, I really got into the band P.O.D. And they were not religious, but they followed Jesus and they believed in God. And their music really spoke to me and it really moved me. And um, that's kind of how I got back into following the word. Um, and I just remember me and my sisters going there. And at first, you know, we wanted to go home. We didn't like it. But one day the, the pastor just broke something down and he spoke about something about, you know, about the kids that, that are broken and that don't have fathers and their fathers aren't around. And, and um, I don't remember what happened, but I remember me and my sisters all broke down crying, like all, of, all three of us. And before that, day, that night, that, that meeting or that, you know, that gathering service, we all wanted to leave. And I remember just that night that me and my sisters felt the Holy Spirit and felt that divine connection. Um, and that kind of changed things for me. And I remember the rest of that camp, um, something just changed. My siblings and I felt closer. I just knew that something was different. And, um, you know, I, I went back, you know, this is my freshman year in high school going into it. And um, throughout, you know, my sports career and all the things I did in, in high school, I prayed every single night every night um, I'd go to church here and there but my relationship with Jesus and God was more of my own personal relationship it wasn't really a religious one at the time and um, you know all that happened you know high school gets over and then I remember in my early 20s my twin sister she's really struggled and she was in a lot of abusive relationships where her, her life was threatened a few times and um, I remember we lived next to this church and uh, I just started taking her to the church and um, for me it didn't really take I stopped going but she kept going and she started reading and bringing all these books and next thing you know she had been going to church every weekend for a year and I just started to see a change in her you know before this my sister was stealing she was promiscuous with a lot of bad men and I remember one night I swear to you guys I uh, this is my twin sister you know I, no one's closer to me than her you know and uh, I uh, prayed to God one night and I just said, Lord, I said, I ask if, if you could do anything, I just say you protect my sister and just please help her find a, a good man. And uh, that the Lord answered the call and maybe six months later she met a guy who I had known who was a good dude and um, she wasn't thinking about giving him a chance, but I was like, you should give him a chance. And um, long story short, they ended up having four kids together. Um, they work in the church. Um, and you know i seen god change her life and my sister always said you know jesus is the father that i never had and she never got the love that she needed she never got those things and uh i've seen the work the 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 work lord the lord has done in those my sister's family and those children's uh kids lives and those kids are never gonna have to go through some of the trauma that we went through um and so that's a, a, another key moment where i've seen god come through and um, but even after that, for years, I stumbled into my I started struggling with drug addiction and alcohol addiction um, after losing a bunch of family members. And I'm just an alcoholic. It's in my DNA. But it didn't rear its head until my mid to late 20s when I started relying on alcohol to deal with my problems. Um, those I mean, those problems range from um, just feeling empty, not feeling enough, my wounded relationship with my mom. Uh, I mean, with my dad, but also with my mom in a sense of she wasn't really emotionally available for me most of my life, even though she was present. Um, and so I had like this inner wound inside of myself of wanting validation from people, from the world. I didn't know how to fill my cup. And but at that time, I believed in God, but I kind of was on like some new age spiritual stuff. And I didn't believe in the word of, of Christianity and Jesus and all that. And, um, you know, God just took me through some really dark times and um you know i fell into not only drinking but using uh, other illicit drugs um nothing too hardcore but you know use your imagination and um it just led me to a lot of self-abandonment a lot of days waking up feeling empty and lost and that i didn't want to be alive anymore um i struggled with relationships with women because of my childhood i could never i always attracted toxic unhealthy relationships because a part of me was toxic and unhealthy um, and so I just felt frustrated that like I, I couldn't have a long-lasting relationship and they always ended in in not the best ways and there were just always like a roller coaster just like I saw when I was a child and um, long story short you know I had a really successful music career here on this channel that you guys are watching my, my videos got up to over 
50 million views. Um, I got on a famous TV show in Brazil, featured on an album with Ed Sheeran and a couple other famous people. Um, was was contacted by the NBA. They wanted to use one of my music videos for a video game or TV show or something. Um, then that bridged into a career of a digital, being a digital marketing freelancer for Atlantic Records, Warner Brothers Records, RCA, Red Bull. I worked freelance work for a bunch of record labels and digital marketing uh, vice presidents. Um, and I was like, wow, man, like, I guess I am pretty successful uh, in a sense. Um, but I, that career allowed me to drink and use without facing consequences because I was able to make money how I made it. Long story short, post-COVID, my, my business starts falling down, my music career starts falling down, and I start relying on alcohol more and more. And um, got into a relationship, ironically, with a woman who um, didn't believe in God, didn't believe in the word. And um, she actually was um, like a, uh, she was gothic and, um, I mean, she was she was a, like a, date, a Satanist in a way, not like an extreme one where she was like, but like she read tarot cards and she would wear shirts that said 666. And, you know, later she would tell me that she's not really a Satanist like that. And so she actually was like kind of a sweet girl. She was just was trying to find herself as well. And, and she was like getting into this goth culture because she was just trying to find her God and trying to find her way. Anyways, um, during that period, I still believed in God and I didn't let that affect me. But I remember being in the, her apartment and just being around all the witchcraft stuff. And the, she had a lot of weird stuff. And I actually made her take away a lot of that stuff and get out of her apartment because it just gave me bad vibes. Um, and I eventually ended that relationship and I just was lost. My music career had flatlined. My promoting, my recording, my record promoting company was barely getting by. I was just paying my essential bills. That's it. And uh, I was starting to drink a lot. Um, I had a pretty bad back injury as well from jujitsu and, and kickboxing. And I was, I, I was just messed up for a good amount of time. And so I was really depressed. I was lonely. I wasn't going to church. I wasn't going to AA meetings. I hadn't went to treatment. And uh, I pretty much just had a mental health breakdown over the course of a year. And I just abused drugs and alcohol. Um, basically until I hit um, a pinnacle of rock bottom and um, I got to the point where you know um, I was having to sell my own drugs and stuff like that to get by with my own addiction and um, I just one night just was like who am I like this isn't me I'm all messed up on drugs I'm out of shape I'm lonely i'm broken from my last relationship i'm broken mainly because my my own brokenness inside of me and um i just got on my knees and i and i i prayed to god and normally during those times i would um i would cry because i felt so desperate to not feel how i felt like i felt so destroyed inside and um basically that um that led me uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. What I meant is those nights I would feel so destroyed I would cry. But this night was different because I was crying tears of joy and I just felt this overwhelming sense of warmth and love. Um, it's going to sound weird but it's probably because of the drugs but I felt like angels and my family members all hugging me and I could like envision their spirits like and I just felt like everything was going to be okay and that's when I surrendered and I reached out to my uncle and I asked for help. Um, and I went to treatment and I was able to get clean and do a lot of the work that I needed. And that's when I really started finding God again. But still, you know, I come home, I get a good job, I get a nice place. And, um, you know, I'm just still one foot in, one foot out. And um, I prayed one night and I asked God, I said, God, show yourself because like, this isn't enough. Like, I haven't seen you, I haven't heard you, I don't, I feel you, but I don't, I need, I need some proof, give me some more proof. And, of course, a couple of weeks go by and, and nothing happens. And I remember uh, I was watching a lot of near-death experiences videos, which heavily influenced me and started to make me believe more in these people talking about meeting Jesus and all these stories. And I, I really felt them. And um, I remember one night I go to bed and then I wake up and I'm conscious and I'm in a full paralysis of my body. And I hear demons at the edge of my bed. I mean, this has never happened to me before. Um, I could hear them. They, it was really more just like a darker kind of energy. That's what I saw. It, it was like, I looked and I was like, where the fuck are they? And I just see like this dark kind of, you know, mist at the edge of my bed. And it's like, why at the edge of my bed? 
and at first it's like a static noise like a white noise and it sounds like just like all those movies you watch when people were possessed and um they're just the demons are blasphemy blasphemy to jesus they're saying fuck jesus jesus is this jesus is that um all these things and um all these cuss words and all these really messed up things and um all i remember saying and i i, I wasn't even i didn't even try like this it wasn't me consciously saying it my body just did it uh, it must have been subconscious and i kept saying jesus is real jesus is coming and I said it with, I wasn't in fear. I was like, I felt, I was like, man, those demons are fucking weak. And they, they, they left. And then I did like a, a prayer that I read um, when you've been visited by demons and I haven't been visited by them since. And um, that for me, you guys, really is the moment that changed where my belief went from God went from, oh, it's just like, you know, there's this higher power to know like Jesus is real, angels are real, devil is real, demons are real. And it was me getting visited by demons, but I didn't realize when I was drinking and I was alcoholic and I was feeling suicidal, demons were with me then. Demons were with my aunt when she overdosed on fentanyl. Demons were, demons are always there. Demons are with you when they're, they're telling you to overeat or smoke or drink or sleep with those people that are not good for you. People don't understand, they think they're in control, but the demons, they, they're able to get in, the devil, the demons are able to get into your spirit in different ways. And, um, the book Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill is not a religious book. Matter of fact, that book is against religion, but it talks about how the devil is real and God is real and de the, the devil really is anything negative frequency. So when you're eating, gluttonizing, that's a deadly sin. When you're lustful for money, lustful for sex, all those different sins, they break down willpower, they break down restraint, they break down um, resilience, they break down your energy. And so when I started realizing that the principles of the Bible were really just universal laws. And I noticed because when I was living at those low frequencies, I was existing on that low frequency and you felt it. You felt like you were in hell. On those two day benders on cocaine and alcohol and with just around my friends and towards the end, you literally felt like you wanted to die and you're in hell and those voices are in your head. But when I've got clean and sober and I'm eating well and exercising and taking care of myself and being, I'm vibrating so high, like even right now, I just feel amazing. And I felt amazing for a while, ever since I started doing the work. And to me, that's what God is. And God, God is that, that, that inner voice inside of me saying, hey, you are enough. You're good enough. Go do this. Go work out. Go eat healthy. Go pray. Go do this. And Satan is, is that energy that's like you self-doubt and greed and envy and jealousy and lust and all those things. Um, and once I realized that all those those deadly sins, how they affect my happiness and well-being, the easier it has been for me to convert and change my ways. Now, I'm not here preaching religion, but I have a personal relationship with God and Jesus. I go to a Christian church that is very welcoming to everyone. It's they, they specifically say this is not a religious church. This is just about the word of Jesus. And so um, for me, that's what's worked. And um, it wasn't until I was encountered by those demons that one night that everything clicked and... I've seen the work God's done in my sister's life, my life, how everything's worked out, how my music career worked out, all these things and where I'm at right now making this video. Um, and that's that's simply you guys get that's I mean <laughs> that's simply you guys, that's simply it, you guys. This is why I believe is because of those experiences I've had and what God has done in my life and um I I'll be here to tell you guys when I when I have faith in God and believe in Jesus. And that connection when I go to meetings and I pray to my higher power and I and I all these things and be social with all these other people in the harmony, I feel great. I feel really good, you know. And, and I was a guy that people were trying to say needs to take SSRIs or mood stabilizers, but really, I just needed to eat healthy and work out and change my thoughts and and find a higher power and go to meetings and go to church and do all these different things. And wow, miraculously, my depression and anxieties are gone, you know. And so that's just where I'm at, you know, I hope this, this little testimony here I shared um, help can help someone else. And, you know, I truly believe that this is just the beginning. And um, just like anyone else, I have, I've always had a fear of death, but it's now that I've confronted, confronted it and I believe that there is something much more after this, um, I'm okay with it. And I can get through all the hurdles and hard times in my life because I know that it's just about strengthening my spirit and that... Um, God has a plan for each soul that comes into this earth. And so with that said, thank you guys for watching. Take care.